Hi, this is Miss White, and today we're going to talk about making connections as we read. There are three types of connections that you can make as a reader, and we're going to go over each of these. But before we start, there are some academic language vocabulary words that you could use to make your connections better. The first one is relate. This is to understand and like or have sympathy for someone or something. I relate to Harry Potter because we're both awesome nerds. So when you're reading a fiction story, sometimes you can relate to the character or sometimes you can't relate. You also might be able to relate to ideas in nonfiction to kind of connect and understand how they're, they're connected. Like, oh, this relates to that. This reminds me of that. Who do you relate to as a character? Relationship um, is the next word. Of course, people think about dating um, when they say relationship, but there's another meaning. It also means the way that two or more people or things are connected. So it's kind of like the connection. There is a direct relationship between reading for fun and overall happiness. So I'm saying that people who read for fun are also happy. Reading for fun is connected to overall happiness. Similar is a word that means almost the same. So an example I can think of here is cricket and baseball are similar. They're not exactly the same, but they're pretty close. You can think about this when you read, oh, this reminds me of this. This and this are similar because blah, blah, blah. Okay, so our learning target for today is today I will read and write down my connections to a nonfiction text so that I can think about the text more deeply and better remember what I read. I'll know I've got it when I can write a deep text to self, text to text, and text to world connection. So the reason why we make connections as we read really is so that you can remember and think about something. The more connections you have in your brain, the smarter you are. That's really what makes someone smart, the number of connections. So if you practice making connections as you read, you're going to get smarter and understand things better. The first type is text to self. This is when you make a connection to something that happened to you. It's the story or the article reminds you of something that happened in your life. It reminds you of maybe someone else's life that you know, like your mom or your friend. And yeah, that's okay. It still texts itself even if it reminds you of your friend because your friend is still connected to you. Questions for text itself. What does this remind me of in my life? What is this similar to in my life? How is this different from my life? Has something like this ever happened to me? And how did I feel when I read this? Okay, text to text is the second type. When you make a connection to another text, you're making a text to text connection. So if you connect what you're reading to another book or something you learned um, before, then that counts as a text to text. Or or maybe um, something reminds you of a movie or a show, like you saw a YouTube video about something similar. That is also text to text. Questions for text to text. What does this remind me of in another book I've read? How is this text similar to other things I've read? How is this different from other books I've read? Have I read something about something like this before? So it doesn't have to be a book, it could be, like I said, a movie, a YouTube video, anything where there's like information written or um, in a video or that you can listen to. Text to world. This is maybe the hardest one. This is when you make a connection to something you know about the world. So this is like the big ideas about people and life and things like that. Questions for text to world. What does this remind me of in the real world? How is this text similar to things that happen in the real world? How is this different from things that happen in the real world? And how does this text relate to the world around me? So remember, when you make connections, 
make sure the connection is helping you helping you to deepen your understanding it's helping you understand it better a weak connection is like um, this is about cats and I know what a cat is obviously you know what a cat is so it has to be something that your knowledge really helps you understand it more deeply you have to think about your background knowledge when you're reading okay I am going to show you how to do this you are going to open this in Google classroom and then click on this link I like Wonderopolis because I think their articles are pretty short and pretty interesting. So you can scroll through here and choose one that looks kind of connected to something that you already know about a little. That would make your um, making connections be a little easier. I'm going to click on how hot is the world's hottest pepper. A cool thing about Wonderopolis is that you can click listen to have the thing read it to you, which is totally okay. There are also some extra things, and you can also click on these to see the vocabulary words. So these are vocabulary words. I'm gonna just show you how I would make one connection. Okay, are you ready to kick back and watch the big game? If you're a sports fan and you've got a big screen television, you probably look forward to relaxing weekends on the couch, watching your favorite players battle it out on the field. Along with a comfortable couch and a high-definition television, there's something else that you need for the perfect viewing experience. Snacks! What foods do you like to crunch on when it's game time? Chips? Salsa? Guacamole? Another game day favorite is the humble buffalo wing. Hot, crispy chicken wings slathered in sauce. Delicious! If you're a fan of wings, what type of sauce do you like? Some prefer traditional buffalo sauce, while others like a milder, buttery sauce that's not too spicy. For many people though, there's no such thing as wing sauce that's too hot. They want to sweat when they eat, so they choose sauces with names uh, that include words like fire and atomic. Okay, I already see a connection that I want to make. So I am going to highlight this, do control C, and then go back to here to paste it. Oh, I need to put the title too. So I need to see how hot is the world's hottest pepper. How hot is the world's hottest pepper? Okay. Oops guys, I messed up. I put mine in the text to text connection, but I don't think that's what it is. So I'm gonna put it here. I think it's a personal connection because this reminds me of when I went to a hot sauce store in um, DC. All the names of the hot sauces were things like Death is Coming or the Incinerator, which is like a place that you can put things um, that you want to burn. I think that people, I'm going to take it deeper here. I think that people like these types of names because it makes them feel tough. That's why I like them. <laughs> okay, so my connection is a few sentences because I'm saying my connection and how that helps me understand this part of the text more. I'm not going to show you all of the others. Just remember that text to text is Maybe something that you've heard about, like, oh, I watched a show and it said um, the spiciest pepper in the world um, was the ghost pepper or something like that. And then connection to the world. That's a really tough one. I'd have to read more and see if it makes me think anything about like history or any of those kinds of like big ideas. If you need help with this one, I will help you. 
and the presentation will be in Google Classroom too so you can look back at the questions that you can ask yourself. You can always um, go back to these to help you. Okay, thanks for watching.